What's up, everyone? Welcome to Brewing with Becky. It has been a hot freaking minute since I have been on here. So for those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much for your loyalty and your patience. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any awesome content. I'm hoping to have lots of episodes come out here in the next short while, um, as well as hopefully a new vlog soon. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's called being Becky, make sure you jump over to YouTube and subscribe to that as well so you don't miss any of the awesome content, including today's episode with my good friend, good longtime friend, uh, and just amazing person, Lindsay Horan will be joining us today. Lindsay is a U.S. Women's National Team player and a member of Portland Thorns in the NWSL. She is a World Cup champion an NWSL champion, and let's be honest, such a champion of life. So I'm super excited with for my chat with Lindsay. Um, and yeah, let's jump right in. Okay, well, we're here with the great Lindsay Horan, also known <laughs> as... No. <laughs> Mm-mm. What is it? Tell us. The great Horan. The great Horan, the Horanimal. Uh, um, Horanimal's better. I like that one. I mean, the great Haran is true as well. Anyways, welcome to Brewing with Becky. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm honored to have you on. Tell us what you're drinking today. Coffee, that is. <laughs> um, only coffee. Just um, throw that having... in there. <laughs> Nitro cold brew. That's my new drink. Oh, uh, shout. With oat milk. Mm-hmm. If there's no nitro, I just have a cold brew with oat milk. And if there's no oat milk, I'll have it with soy. Okay. So we're a uh, non-dairy kind of coffee drinker. We are a iced coffee year-round drinker or just in the summer? Year-round. Thank doesn't you. doesn't matter what weather Soul is sister. happening. I literally, hot coffee in the morning, I can do it, like, if I haven't left the house. But, like, uh-huh. iced, iced coffee all day long. You know what I have learned about Europe, though, and you will know this having lived here. It's really hard to find, like, just regular brewed coffee, like cold here. Like, it's either yeah. an iced latte or an iced Americano. Well, are you guys, like, in in France, like, all I had was espresso, literally. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I can make my own filter coffee, but it's hard to find like just normal iced coffee, which hurts my heart a little bit. But I've jumped on the latte train. Well, I've got these um, Europeans. Very strong water. (laughs) Water. Janine's had too much caffeine today already by 3 p.m. It's 3.30 p.m. and I am severely over caffeinated. So if I start talking really fast, you know why. That's normal. Yeah, so time change. Lindsay's in the U.S. I'm here. I figure let's do it early enough that I can still have a coffee, but I didn't make it. I already had three, two, three. That's Sorry. probably probably frowned upon. Who's spoken about that? Um, yeah. So let's jump right in to all the exciting things of your life. Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, and most don't know because somehow the story of how I grow up gets changed. I grew up in Canada. I grew up in Colorado. I lived in Canada my whole life. I lived in Colorado my whole life. It's just the story changes. Uh, To set the story straight, I was born and raised in Colorado, as was Lindsay. And we've known each other since we were like 11. Mm -hmm. Known each other is, we're going to call that a soft term, because we played against each other starting at 11. Uh, Lindsay played for Rush, which we don't need to talk about. Uh, I played for Real, but we're going to talk about it anyway. So just shot myself in the foot there. Rock. Um, (laughs) We were rivals growing up in the youth, Colorado youth system. Uh, Tell me what that was like for you. Um... Well, first off, I think a lot of people don't actually have this growing up, like in the youth system. And the fact that Rush and Real, I think more so back then, was such a big rivalry. And it was just like the most intense and like entertaining game was was this rivalry in Colorado. 
So I think that's like really cool and actually makes Colorado so great because we had that growing up. Um, I mean, most of the wins came from uh, the rough side of things, but uh, Real showed up. No. Hey, we put in a good effort. No, I think it was very back and forth. But, like, you were on the younger team for a bit, huh? Yes, so also confusing. Uh, Because of my (laughs) birth, (laughs) there's just a lot of confusion around this. Because of my birthday, I could play for two age groups. So I played with the older age group, which was your age group, for, like, the first three or four years of what we called competitive soccer. And then I dropped down an age group. And actually, the age group below your age group was a bit more competitive at Real. So I actually think like we, I don't know if that team ever played your team, but the team at your age group at Real was very off and on with Rush. I think you guys probably had the upper hand in wins versus losses uh, for that group. But um, for the younger group, I think it, it, it went back and forth a little bit. But yeah, I agree. The rivalry at such a young age, it's fun. Um, and we, yeah, we had a good time. We, we had a really good time yeah. playing youth. I loved playing in Colorado. Um, so that's, that's the history of me and Lindsay. We've known each other for a long time. We mm-hmm. have gotten much closer as we've gotten older, which has been lovely. And, uh, would say that, you know, would call you my training partner now. We went hard <laughs> at it. In, quarantine uh, training partner quarantine which we will we will touch on uh later in this conversation but <laughs> oh god <laughs> the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> literally like every day yeah. um so you obviously have had an interesting path to where you are now um from a experience standpoint which is a lot different than how a lot of Americans experience getting to the pros or getting to the national team uh, for our European listeners and even American listeners, uh, obviously <clears throat> the stereotypical path in the U.S. is youth soccer, you get recruited, you go play college soccer for four years somewhere, you go through the draft, um, which is obviously still relatively new, um, and then you, you, know, you play in the NWSL, or if you don't get drafted, then you look for a team abroad. So that's the path that I went on. Um, it's a path that most current pros coming from America went on, but you had a different experience. Um, so you were committed to play at North Carolina, if I'm correct. Yep. And that was your plan. But then you had um, an opportunity to play abroad for PSG. And at 17? Was it 17 or 16? Um, 17 was when I went and did a trial with Leon and then 18 was when I went with PSG. Okay. So still incredibly young goes over to Europe. And did you even know really what to expect? No, <laughs> I said, no. um, no, not at all. Um, I obviously was just like, I know I'm going to be put into a completely different culture, but at that time I was so young and naive and, but again, that's why I chose to, do this is put myself in an uncomfortable position and um yeah it was kind of a a big culture shock when I went over there I I literally had no idea what I was stepping into and I was young and shy and you know it it was a wild first few months I'll say that and obviously you're going to a country where you have no experience in speaking French no (laughs) not at all language creates some some issues so um when you finally decided that PSG was the place and you you got there you know culture shock everything what was that experience in whole like for you um I would say the first like three to four months was pretty brutal I think like the most um happy I was was on the field like playing and mostly because I, I had no idea what the coaches were saying to me because I didn't speak French. So it could have been even more brutal and I just didn't know. Um, but like outside, outside the, the training center, it was, it was miserable. I was homesick and um, I just didn't really like, I, I had no desire to like go out and do anything or explore or didn't really know anyone on the team. And I was living with um, Anika Kron at the time, this uh German international 
who most people should know, the legend. Um, but she was basically like 12 years older than me, I think. So it was oh like, gosh. I had a mom, <laughs> um, little, little apartment in San Juan and lay like, uh, a few minutes outside of like where we, we train and, and whatnot. So yeah, I would say the first few months were probably the most brutal. And then, um, and then we had like the Swedish international Kosovar come, Tobin came and things, things obviously got better, but I would say like, the first bit of my time there, I was just like, I would go to training and then I'd come home and be in my apartment all day, like watching some kind of show or Skyping my mom. Like it was That's very- so <laughs> funny that you say that because my first year at City was like almost exactly the same. And granted, I can't even mm. imagine because obviously like we speak English here. So that was not an issue for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, still like big culture shock. And um, it's, it's interesting to hear someone else have that same experience. And I would think that that's a relatively common thing to happen. But I think too, like stepping out of your comfort zone is obviously uncomfortable. That's the the point. Um, But you, you took this step to go to PSG. It's a really, really tough emotionally and mentally. And then obviously on top of that, physically you're having to perform. So it's just this incredibly draining experience. And I think there's this misconception that you know you obviously that was a huge deal that you went over there um you know you sign your first professional contract you're making your own money and to the outside this is like oh my gosh life couldn't get better but on the mm-hmm. inside it's like the kind of things that no one knows about so I find that interesting but from a like technical perspective um what do you how do you think that it challenged you at that age um, and how do you think that that's helped you get to where you are? Um, well, firstly, I think, you know, given all the outside stuff that was going on, I had to grow up really quick and that actually came into play on the field as well Is like, I couldn't do what I, I did at rush or with my, with my youth teams or whatever, which I mean, again, is why I went over there. Um, and I was playing with so many internationals, you know, there's German, Swedish, French internationals um that really like I I did have to grow up like the probably average age was like high 20s um so I think that was like one of the biggest things that you know I couldn't be this like naive little kid on the field anymore doing whatever she wanted to do Mm -hmm. and things were quicker uh players were smarter and and like now you're in a you know you know this as well as I do, like, this is your job, like, your, your job is to, you know, at the time, I was a, a nine, my job was to score goals, if I didn't score goals, like, I might not be on the field, Mm -hmm. and if you miss, you miss the one opportunity you get, you might be, you might be benched, and yeah, that was, like, that was a big thing for me, it's, like, you can do whatever you wanted on, on your youth team, on your club team, and you know you're not going to be taken off the field, because you're the best player on your team, um, the same for you, it's, it's just crazy, and And so I think that was, you know, everyone has to go through that when they, from college to, to pro-life and and whatnot. But like at 18, it was kind of like, oh my gosh. (laughs) And and I had like coaches saying, you know, this is what it's going to be like. You can't just, you know, walk in there and think you're going to be starting, which I was at the time. But I think Mm -hmm. as, as time went on, you know, more internationals came, like I was benched at um at a certain period of time because we had a a French international who was better than me and rightly so she should have been on the field but then it was like oh my gosh like now I need to get better and I can't just like ride through here and I'm I'm solid gold and 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 figure out how to manage that for the first time in your life yeah um on top of everything else that's that's so hard and I think for for so many people for me included like my college experience was that transition that you didn't have and it yeah. was like this mixture between you could still do still I would say get away with some of the habits that you've built as a youth player because it's kind of what college is for, but at the mm-hmm. same time start to build the new things into your routine like uh, positional discipline and scoring your chances and things that like you just kind of went zero to a hundred. Um, and for a lot of people, they have that transitional period. And I remember when you left and how obviously in Colorado especially that that was the conversation like did she make the right decision should she have not gone to college obviously there were people on on both sides of the opinion but 
but obviously like we've seen Mal do the same thing skip college soccer and for both of you it's it's given you this what I would assume a quicker path to the national team Mm -hmm. and I think that that's so important for young players to see and not that because for someone like me I mean coming from me I had I needed college soccer like I needed that it was right. pivotal for for me to to grow. I wasn't ready to go pro as a seventeen year old coming out of high school, but for you and Mal, like to do your different parts of of your soccer journey. Um, so I remember I remember that so clearly and thinking like, man, I wish I could do that. But it is really <laughs> interesting to hear how it's not like for for people that don't know, for people that aren't in it, that is not sunshine and rainbows. Going over and playing for this like world renowned club, um, that it's actually a lot of times and for you and me harder the majority of the time than it is like enjoyable and easier oh for um sure. so you play at PSG how long were you at PSG I was there three and a half years okay so you play the three and a half years at PSG it obviously gets better you get to play with Tobin which is really cool um you mm-hmm. guys you know you're really successful there and then what what made you decide to come to come home um well for me it was actually it's crazy because that was probably one of the biggest decisions of my life was going over there and then in the midst of it we were uh my fourth season there because I had signed on for another two years um after my first two um I got an opportunity to come um back in with the national team I'd gotten a few call-ups and then Jill called me and I think at the time it was like November so literally in the middle of the season um and I went out and played and blah, blah, blah. And I had a meeting with Jill at the end of the camp saying, like, I need you in the U.S. if you're, like, going to be considered for the Olympics. This, is, this was pre-Olympic qualifying. And qualifying was in January. And I was just like, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to break a contract. Like, yep. and, you know, I, I signed on for two years. Like, that's what I want to give. And especially at the time, like, I, I was starting and I think I had a bigger role on the team. And and we were flying, you know, like we were in round of 16 in Champions League and um, the team Living was like the dream so, of a European footballer. Yeah, like it's it's so hard. But at the same time, like my dream and, and one of my biggest goals in life was to make the Olympic roster and be a consistent player with the national team. And Jill needed me in the U.S. to do that. So after that, I had conversations with um, PSG and ultimately they let me go, which was awesome um Mm -hmm. because I knew what I wanted to do but yeah so I had to literally broke my contract and played in one last game with uh with PSG and left probably two days later and packed all my bags and (laughs) went into like the next camp with the national team is freaking wild it's like we live the most ridiculous lifestyle like I remember when I signed for City I was like in New Jersey and literally three weeks later I was in Manchester, like had signed my yeah. contract, all the paperwork was done. And I was like, that was, that felt like two days. And it's just so yeah. crazy how fast it all happens. And it's cool. There's a really positive part of being able to change location in a career so easily right. and so quickly. But it's also obviously super difficult, you Stressful. know, as well as me, to change environments and to come into a new team again and have yeah. to reacclimatize yourself with new players, new system, new coach, all of that. Um, but right. obviously, like you say, that you did that for the sake of, you know, being ready for the 2016 Olympics. So you come back to the Portland Thorns, which yep. is just incredible. Uh, for any of you that don't know or don't follow the Thorns, like 18 to 20,000 people at all their games. It's like the most insane environment to play in. So you get to Portland, and what was that transition like? Did you find that relatively smooth? Um, I don't know if you even know this, but it was so funny. Like, during one of my first camps, I, actually, it might have been the, the January camp leading into qualifying. I was supposed to go to Orlando. That was, like, me coming back. I did um, not know that. Yeah. So I was I was going to Orlando, and I was a little, like, weary about it because I'm just, like, not a big Florida person in general. Um, and I was on the bus like after one of uh, our trainings and I got my rights like got traded to Portland. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, it's like, I literally... freaking crazy how it happens like that. It's just like, yeah. oh, well, yeah. now I'm going to the other side of the country. Yeah, it oh. was like a, a three-way 
trade it was like me sauna and cling um for alex and alex went to orlando and oh, yeah, um, she was with the thorns man that feels like forever ago yeah but um so went into the the thornies and obviously it was the best thing ever <laughs> oh my <laughs> the, gosh she's the been best. there since imagine yeah, if you had gone to orlando oh my gosh I, what could have been <laughs> we don't need to talk about that uh, <laughs> Uh, okay so you get no. to Portland it's it's awesome you love it you fall in love yeah. with it it's a club that I think anyone would be lucky to play for um it's a great yeah. organization obviously incredibly talented players rich history um and mm -hmm. you've obviously not hated it because you've been there since which is which is awesome so you're yeah. in with the national team for you know the first time you feel solidified in the group the greater group that's in contention for um, the Olympics. So this is easy, uh, early 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're in with the national team. Obviously, you go through qualifying. We always end up playing each other in qualifying. When I have your jersey from a qualifying. Oh, game. was it that I think game? It was. I don't think it was that game. I think it was uh, qualifying for the World Cup. It was World Cup qualifying um, before oh, okay. the last. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I think that it's the jersey that has, like, it's split down the middle, and then it has the stripes on one side. Oh, uh, uh, terrible. Yeah, I don't I don't One of the games, because we always one play of each other ones. in the CONCACAF <laughs> final, and we won't talk yeah. about the results of those games, because they highly favor we can, one if of them. we want we to. We won't say who they favor, but uh, <laughs> just do your research. People, if you want to know. Um, so, lead up to the Olympics, talk, talk us through what that experience was like um confidence what how are you feeling did you feel like you had a good chance at the roster or was it kind of you know like could be anyone up till the announcement um honestly after I'd come back made the Olympic qualifying um team I was starting probably every single game with Morgan in the midfield I think at the time we were playing at like 4-4-2 wild um and again, I was starting every single game and I was pretty confident going into the Olympics. But again, I, th I think like most players can sit here and just be like, y you never know. Um, mm -hmm. And um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know if you even know this, but like during that time, it was it was really hard for me. I think I was a little like overwhelmed with everything, like coming back after, you know, half a season with um, – with PSG and then coming into the national team environment and then going into She Believes, which you play like three of the top teams in the mm -hmm. world. I think that was a big shock for me. Um, and I kind of like after, I think we played England. It was, it was like a big, like, like probably one of the worst games I've ever played. <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah. And then leading up to the Olympics, um, confidence kind of dropped and I actually lost my, my starting spot. Um, and it was it was like a big like mental game for for me, um, so that was like a big learning lesson because going into the Olympics I didn't play as much as I wanted to. Um, I probably only started one game and we ended up losing in the the quarterfinal, which yeah. was horrible. Um, but yeah, just not the obviously not the experience um, we wanted or I wanted. And my goodness, we were in freaking Brazil. <laughs> That was yeah that tournament was wild that tournament was crazy yeah. and if I remember correctly you guys had to do the like super long travel from like south all the way up to like the jungle which yeah. was like a what, like was five a hour one. flight like I just yeah. can't even believe that they did that we got we got pretty lucky I think we ended up playing four games in the same place um uh, okay. which was awesome but yeah so the Olympics didn't go how you guys wanted um I think like hearing some of your teammates talk about that and just kind of obviously like being there and seeing you guys get knocked out a lot sooner than I think everyone had expected. It's incredibly difficult to, to win a World Cup in 26, 2015 and then turn around and have a strong world performance at the Olympics. Um, and I think obviously that's now presented itself again. And, mm -hmm. you know, fingers crossed that everything comes to fruition and, and the games can happen next summer. But It'll be really interesting to see to see how the team performs there. But so you, obviously disappointment at the 2016 Olympics, and then there's a little bit of downtime for world events. 
Um, and then, you know, fast forward all the way to the World Cup and preparation for the World Cup. We see each other again in the World Cup qualifying championship game. It was in Dallas. It was raining. I remember that because it was like downpour and I wore oh my, my hair gosh, in a bun in that terrible. game. Yeah. And I don't, so I never bad. wear my hair in a bun. And I was like, that's how I know it was, it was raining. And that's when we exchanged jerseys. That's the game. Yeah. So both of now. us qualify, get to France. <clears throat> you guys have a fantastic tournament, um, but you, it's so difficult being on a team during a tournament like that because as a coach, you have obviously the lineups in your mind in some regard. And like for us, I know our lineup didn't change a whole lot through the tournament. And I know that that was really frustrating for some players. It's it's an incredibly difficult thing to handle. Mm -hmm. Um, And for you guys, I think obviously you got to rotate your lineup quite a bit in in the group stage um, due to obviously you guys have an incredibly deep roster, but also I think the um, opponents, allowed for that a little bit so everyone Mm -hmm. saw the field for a decent amount of time so you guys get through the group stage and then talk us through what it was like for you personally um through you know the round of 16 to the final um yeah I think I again I was super grateful with the minutes I got even in the group stage because I I don't necessarily think that was supposed to happen um you know we had a few injuries and um resting games so I ended up starting every single game through the group stage um which was awesome you know in my first world cup and then um got to the round of 16 and I think uh played Spain I played seven minutes um Mm -hmm. which was which was very hard uh for me but we made it through um similar to the France game I think I played 30 closing out the game that was the most wild game of the tournament oh my gosh crazy I was watching that game yeah everyone um everyone wanted the France U.S. final that was in the back of everyone's head through the group stage and how you know it was supposed to work out blah 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 um obviously that never ever happens um <laughs> but again that was the most wild game I've ever stepped into like off the bench I could not believe it the whole uh, thing like the stadium the yeah. atmosphere what was on the line like I think if you ask anyone what their most memorable game from that tournament was, that would probably be at the top of most people's list. Yeah, for sure. I re- <laughs> Funny story, I remember my mom saying, I think I think she might have said this during the Chile game too, but she was like, there's so many U.S. fans at the France game. And I go, well, how'd you know that? And she was like, because there's so much red, white, and blue. And I was like, <laughs> mom. <laughs> Do you I love know your mom. The, that is hilarious. The French I was like, you can mom, look at were they cheering you. for us though? <laughs> well, now that you say that, I was like, I was like mom, go look amazing. up the French flag and get back to me. Oh my uh, god! So that was. Yeah. We did have a lot of a lot of U.S. fans there, which was incredible. Um, but actually, by far, my favorite game was the the England game. Um, not just because I started, obviously. I was Again, very grateful that I, I got to play in that game, played 90. Um, <clears throat> it was just like, you know, one of those games that had absolutely everything in it. You know, there was a PK, there was a PK save, there was incredible goals. Um, you know, Liz played one of the games of her life. Uh, I had a, an assist to Alex, which I love, 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 love. Oh, such a giving sick assist. Goal. Thank you. Uh, um, I remember that. we. So I can't remember which game it was. I want to say it was maybe before or after the French game. I was sitting in the airport, and we were texting each other. And I do you remember were, that. You were a little disappointed with how things were going, but, like, I could tell you were trying to be, like, because obviously in that situation, it's never about you. Like, everyone yeah. knows in that environment, and it's just so difficult as a competitive player, and, like, you're at a World Cup, and you just want to be on the field. Like, everyone knows that. Um, yep. But I could, like, even through text message, I could feel this, like, just was pulling you in both directions. Like, you were so frustrated. But at the same time, you were like, I just want us to win. And I remember mm-hmm. talking to you, and I was just like, look, Lynn, your moment's going to come. It's going to happen. <laughs> and then you freaking yeah. have that assist. And I'm sitting there like, yes, <laughs> yes. Who said it? 
I take the credit. <laughs> Janine Becky. No, but it is true. Like, um, people don't look at those situations like that. It is like, it is all about the team. You have to put all of your feelings aside, especially in, you after the tournament, you go do whatever you want. You have your mental breakdown if you want to, because a lot of players do, but because you're literally confined in a hotel for a month. Um, but yeah, but again, it's like, this is all about the team, no matter how many minutes you play, um, what your role is. If you're a bench player the whole time, like it's about the team. It's not about yourself. Um, and that's like a it's big hard. learning lesson. It's really hard, those. but I mean, yeah. the best team to do that, obviously, like, I think I always look at teams, the best teams in the world, and you have players on, you're always going to have world-class players on your bench. That's what mm -hmm. the best teams in the world have. So, you know, as a coach, you want to make that decision as hard as possible. Um, yeah. As a player, you want to make it difficult for them to choose the 11, but you look on the bench and you're like, man, like, if, I was, if I'm on the other team, which I have been on the other team against you guys multiple times. I remember back in 2017, we played that series where you guys came to Vancouver and then we went to San Jose. And we're playing right. in Vancouver and Pino didn't start the game. I, I think it was Pino. And it's like the 70th minute and we're playing really well. We're in the game, we're, we've got, we got a flow. It was, it was tied and the game ended up being tied. And they look over and Megan Rapino's standing to come in the game. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. They just keep coming. <laughs> And uh, it's just like, it's, oh, and you're just like, it, granted, like, that's what you want. Like, you want to play against yeah. the best players. I'm like, that was such a fun game. It's one of my favorite games. But anyways, so fast forward, insane game against France, insane game against England. Everyone's on the freaking edge of their seats. And you get to the final. And I just remember thinking, like, there's absolutely no way they don't win this game. And obviously, like, I have so many friends on the team and competitive spirit-wise, like, especially Canada versus U.S. Like, when you're in it, you're like, oh, I hate them. But then, like, when yeah. we're out of it, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just want my friends to win. And uh, <laughs> I was just obviously, like, elated for you guys. And um, so you win the World Cup. Whatever. You're World Cup champion. la dee da dee da uh, Yeah. Moving on. Uh because I don't want to make you sit here with me for the next four hours and talk about this. <laughs> um, amazing. 2019 is a great year. And then comes 2020, which has been, you know, just the year of everyone's wild. life. I was saying yep. this to my roommate the other day, like, what a wild year it's going to be to tell our kids about someday. Like, hey, do you remember 2020? Like, we had to stay inside for two weeks. It's going to um, be in your history books. Oh, ridiculous. But anyway, so... 2020 comes, you are preparing for the NWSL season. Um, Preseason starts in normally March, April-ish. Yeah, end of March. Um, March yeah. And obviously, like, I'm in England for the probably last fourth of our season, and all of a sudden, you know, COVID-19 hits. Fast forward, we have shut everything down. I fly home to Colorado, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I hope Lindsay's here. So I'm, like, texting you. I'm like – you're still in Portland. And I'm like, are you going to come home? And you're like, I'm trying to come home. So we're both in Colorado. And I made my way home. <laughs> she, she came. She got, she jumped on the next flight. Somehow I got there. <laughs> and we trained. I want to say we trained every day at like at least five days a week for like four yeah. weeks straight. We just like went hard. And yeah. it was just so weird because no one knew what was going to happen. We were like just constantly like, well, I could go back like next week or I could be here for the next however long. I ended up being home for almost four months, which is crazy. And Wild. you were home till like the last minute you could be. And then you have to go back to Portland to prepare for this NWSL Challenge Cup. And there's all these questions flying around. And obviously like for the NWSL to have pulled that off is <clears throat> fantastic. Um, yeah. I mean, from the outside, obviously to be the first, let me just re-say that again. The first, because there seems to be some kind of confusion that there was, you guys were not What's the, first. the problem here? How do we not I know I don't that? know. I don't know. It's, I just remember, it's something. actually, this is funny. I was sitting on the couch watching your first game. And I was just like so excited to watch live sports again. And I was actually messaging Sam Kerr. And I was like, are you watching this game? And I'm like, do you miss the league? And she's like, yes, I miss the league. And you're just like reminiscing about the NWSL and talking about how cool it was that you guys are playing. 
Yeah. So tell tell me what it was like in the bubble because you obviously you as the outsiders we see what we get to see but you literally like couldn't leave the hotel right right and I'm gonna rewind real quick and just talk about me and Janine's time and, and <laughs> one day <laughs> but I I think there's at least like three days each for each of us this is very important where we actually lost our marbles. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't know what happened but there was days we would just come out and be like why in the heck are we training <laughs> because what is we going on we literally were going every single day and like me and Janine would be out there for like at least an hour to an hour and a half doing so many so and many like, things girls like Colorado weather during that period too oh. like one day it was like 10 degrees and then the next day it's like 70 degrees I'm like what do I yeah. wear today oh I remember the first time we did 15 15 and I thought that I was going to die <laughs> at altitude I was like this is going to be a really long time isn't it yeah oh. the, we, we my, were psychos. Fa- my favorite was when uh I was like oh I'm gonna do the the suicide mile and I think you were leaving <laughs> and you you had a meeting or something and I was like I was no, like I'm good luck it. Liz I got this and for anyone that doesn't know the suicide mile it's stupid it's just too much running and I made it to maybe the second line and I'm like Mm-mm, not today <laughs> it's not text happening me. I get home I was like 10 minutes in the field I have a text from Lindy she's like I left I couldn't do it I was like well wow, it's fine <laughs> we actually had like a really really good time this is, I'm going to yeah. remember that as, like, one of my most cherished times. Let's you see. don't get, you don't get that kind of training, um, ever. Like, no. We never get to train together. No. So, and it was lovely. when I tell you, lovely. if anyone, we have a saying now, it's called hashtag bangers only, and <laughs> there was really some days where it was bangers only. Do you remember that day? There was there was one day that I went six for six on the benders, and there was one mm-hmm. day where you went like six for six on the left, and then like five for six on the right. And man, it we was a day. For those moments. And then I there mean, were we other days it. where we didn't look like we were athletes. <laughs> so there's this big hill behind the goal oh. <laughs> we were shooting at, and it, the hill goes up to another pitch, and we had to start punishing ourselves for hitting the balls up on the other field because running up and down that hill was like was a something. death sentence. <laughs> actually, you know what? I'm actually really surprised that neither of us fell down oh, that. Oh, down that. The, the best point. part we're of actually, that. We're really lucky that we didn't fall. I'm very surprised yeah. by that. You know what was the best thing to hear during that? <laughs> Linz, I'll get him this time. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. I got him. I'm and like, then thank to the, like, God. There's like... I don't know why there's not more like fences around that. Hopefully at some point they do put like fences. Although typical real. Hey. (laughs) You were on the field. So (laughs) we had a field. Thanks to Real. Uh, then there's this like the it goes down on the left side and sometimes we would miss so bad. It's like when you shoot the ball and it goes out for a throw in and you like just should walk off the field at that moment and just call it a day we didn't because <laughs> we didn't. were better than that you were better than that and there's like this <laughs> sewer water like down in this ditch and you have to like go into the water and get the ball we just this was there was just so many memories we so, weren't in that sewer that much just like no no thankfully to everyone listening we aren't that bad we actually do score in the goal sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and then it's, we, so I don't, funny. it's really a big question why we did some of the things that we did you know that one where we are kind of on the side of the outside the 18 on the side play it in receive take like a separation touch and then you like went at the goal and had to beat yeah. the, the little goal and we did like five reps and my heart rate was like 350 <laughs> by the time we were done and I'm like why we were blowing <laughs> oh but I'll tell you what I, we we got pretty darn fit by the end of this whole situation so Uh best case scenario I think that was for us yeah I agree that was that's good times I'm glad that's a good memory for you it's a good memory 
the way that I felt some of the days is not a great memory, but we got through it. We got and through it. And bought we, a treadmill. <laughs> I bought a treadmill, which is now broken, by the way. No way. It broke. My mom's trying to fix it. It's fine. Uh, as long as she gets it fixed by the winter. Then We're solid. You just, I'm just yeah, trying to help there. my mom out, you know? Keep her fit. Mm-hmm. Um, so sad day comes. I have to leave. You leave shortly after. Yeah. And you go to Portland and, and soon you guys get back into training. All these new rules. Your mask is your new best friend. And then you fly to Utah. <laughs> and we're back to not being able to leave the hotel. Although I saw you at a tech ball board, which is awesome. So I'm oh, sure that was a good time. But best thing in my life. talk us through it. Like, you have your own room. What do you do all day? Like, you guys had a coffee truck, which was awesome. Yeah. But, like, talk about it. What was it like? Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I think, um, given the situation, uh, we kind of set the, the tone for the tournament beforehand. And, and we were just, we were literally just like, we can go into this thing being so negative, complaining about any little thing that happens, or we can go into it and look at every bright side of, of what we're doing and, and how we are and knowing that Portland is going to do the absolute most because Portland is a very professional club and they want us to feel like we're at home, which they did. Um, and I think we probably did have a better situation than most teams, but I can genuinely say like I had – an amazing time I think our team was like awesome during the whole the whole tournament uh disregard some of the results but we still made it to the semifinal um I think the the worst part about it for me was was me getting like a minor injury like so nothing off the field or like I really actually enjoyed myself and yes the tech ball table helped a little bit I played against our trainer the whole time (laughs) um no one else would play against me except sink uh for a little bit when she wasn't tired um Aww, and thanks. we yeah we had a big lounge with like ping pong table we had one of those like those little mini basketball hoop things oh gosh. um trick shot yeah um and yeah you could like you could go on walks like around but you can't really like leave the vicinity you know um I mean just yeah. the way that that was all pulled off and not a single positive test like just claps for the NWSL and all the teams um, and pulling that off and and as a viewer of the tournament it was so fun I watched every game I could although the, the night games I got really sad because they were like in the middle of the night and I can't. it's good that we only had one <laughs> yeah I know you guys were the schedule worked out for me to watch the Portland Thorn a lot that, was, that wasn't that cool. wasn't a positive <laughs> <laughs> and I will have to say obviously sad that you guys lost but we'll have to say it was quite happy that the dash won something and we're champions after so many years and on the Houston Dash so I'm slightly biased but well done to the NWSL um yeah it'll be interesting moving forward what happens with the league and obviously lots of exciting news about new teams um and all that nice jazz so what what now like you're obviously at home you're training what's next um to be to be perfectly honest not quite sure um I think we don't know I think we are trying to do something um in Portlandia which can be exciting I think you know everyone's trying to figure out something I I think especially for the NWSL maybe uh an east coast thing and a west coast thing and many regional tournaments um whatnot but I think they're like still in the talks of like the logistics but hoping to get more games out of the season um for the national team we don't really know I don't I don't know if you guys even know um no. yeah it's kind of it's still a bit of the waiting game and I think during these like past two to three weeks it's been uh a little rest for me um and mm-hmm. mental break which we don't often get um so I've really Not enjoyed often. myself no <laughs> no 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 um <laughs> but yeah I'm actually back, back to Portland on Friday um and yeah I guess we're just gonna wait and see if that actually happens and uh just give us a really quick update on our little my nephew how's he doing he is amazing he misses you 
Just so um, everyone knows, I'm talking about her dog. She doesn't yeah. have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've made that mistake plenty of times saying my son. Uh, I think I told he you the is. story, but <laughs> he is my son. I told my uh, sports psych I was going to see him one day in Portland, and I'm like, are you okay if I bring my son? <laughs> He's like, I, he didn't text me back for a little bit, and then he told me later on, he was like, I literally had to go Google you because I didn't <laughs> something you're you. not telling me. Yeah, he was Aww. like, I've worked with this girl for three months, and I didn't know she had a son. <laughs> and I'm like, Ferguson, oh. what a legend. Yeah, yeah Ferguson's just a little great. potato. So he was bigger when I came back from uh, the Challenge Cup, which, not that much bigger, but. The quarantine I mean, gonna, 15 is true for dogs as well, I guess. You're going to, the next time you see him, he's going to be huge. Can't wait. I'll ship him over here. I can watch him for a few weeks. <laughs> But anyways, thank you for joining us on Brewing with Becky. I am assuming you have finished your cold brew after this long talk. Oh, but I'm also going to assume first that you're going to have another one because that's just what we do. Also, yeah. for the record, to state it on the record, did you? Yeah, you did buy me. You bought me your co- the coffee you owe me, right? Did she? Yes. I don't know if she did. I don't think you did. Everyone, you're uh, witness no, to No, I this. did. I did. We went to Starbucks. Remember? Oh, yes. We went to Starbucks, then we had salad. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Uh, I won the, the crossbar game. So you won it a lot, too, just not when we were betting. I only win when things are on the line. <laughs> yeah. Certainly. When coffee's on the line, I win. Um, yeah, but to out. be continued, that game, because there will be more games to be played mm-hmm. and more nitro cold brews to be drank and a lot more salad to be eaten yes and that is how we will conclude so thank you for joining us everyone the her animal <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys thank you so much